My name is Armando Worshing. I'm a director of product marketing here at Catalan. Uh, joining me today are Mike Verinder, our uh, community advocate, and Dean Bodart from Bright Test, uh, who's the domain lead there around ERP for SaaS. And uh, we are going to be talking, as the title states, Bright Test implements a sustainable ERP test automation strategy for SAP using Catalan. That's a lot of words. In short, how do we make SAP testing easier and faster with Catalan? Um, so with that, uh, we'll get started. Let me go ahead and move forward. So we've just handled the introductions. I always find that funny that we put that on the agenda, even though it's already happened. <clears throat> I do that myself all the time. So um, we're gonna. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Catalan. I'm gonna hand it over to Dean, who's gonna talk a little bit about Bright Test, and then we're gonna get into those topics listed below, right? ERP testing and cloud ERP, SAP testing. And Dean's going to do a demo of the, what they've been doing with Studio, with Catalan Studio um, around SAP for and do a deep dive of the tech for that. Um, then we'll have some Q&A. We're going to be asking myself, mostly Mike, uh, we'll be asking possibly some questions. There's going to be a few poll questions uh, during the presentation um, and at the end. So, you know, take part. It's an interactive type of experience. Uh, but with that, I'll get started with the boring part. So as I mentioned, uh, Catalan is a um, well-known and respected tool. Uh, we are known for our Catalan Studio, which is the auto, uh, test automation authoring tool and execution tool. Um, but in truth, Catalan is an entire platform for software uh, quality. We kind of fit in that space of the design of the software workflow from design to build into the QA section in the middle, and then to release in. You know, we're using the terms digital experience now since so many of the, so much of the software that's released now is about reaching out to businesses and consumers and providing an integrated digital experience. What used to be called omnichannel, but now it's just digital experience. Um, we provide all the parts of testing, right? So for planning, for authoring, for organizing your test executions, for the actual execution, whether that be on-prem or in the cloud, and then the reporting and analysis that helps you kind of um, transform that activity into more efficient, more effective testing and higher quality. All those bullet points, I'm not going to go through them, but those are things that the platform provides. Now, what you will be seeing today with Dean is, is uh, basically the Catalan Studio. It is the tool for authoring, and it comes in two flavors, Catalan Studio, which is free, and Catalan Studio Enterprise, which has some additional bells and whistles, and it's, more, it's our enterprise-based authoring tool. Uh, as you can see, we have excellent ratings. Uh, our community loves us, and it's quite strong. Um, there's, uh, there are 200 global companies using us. We're on the AWS marketplace. You can find our uh, add-ons in the Atlassian marketplace. Um, we've got a 20% market foot share, and we've got a few companies um, that like to use us. You may recognize some of the labels here, right? The logos are broad and in, in, in many industries and in many places around the world. Uh, but hopefully you'll see one that you recognize and 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 resonates with you so you know that uh, it's a tool that's been used. And our customers are very happy with the capabilities that they gain and the quality of software they can put out and how efficient they can be in their software quality processes. So um, that's it. That's commercial for Catalan. Here, I'll turn it over to Dean and uh, fire away, Dean. Yeah, th thanks, Hermano, for the short introduction already. So my name is Dean, and I'm the domain lead for ERP and SaaS applications at Brightest. Um, maybe let me give you some context about what that actually means, because I found out um, that my job title can be confusing, at least to a lot of recruiters on LinkedIn. So let me explain. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so Brightest is a software quality company, meaning that we mainly help our clients address all challenges they may have when it comes to software quality, software testing, software testing strategies, and basically rolling out more qualitative software at an increasingly faster pace, right? So that's what we do. That's our core business. And we, we try to aim as high as possible in that. Uh, and within that context, I am the domain lead for all our testing solution and services related to ERP project at our client side. So that is a specific niche at Brightest that focuses on ERP testing in a broad perspective. And since SAP is one of the world's most used um, ERP systems, we um, have quite a lot of services developed for that, including some 
solutions that are based on the Catalan Studio platform, uh, not only uh, the free version, but also the enterprise one. And by the way, Armando, we, not in this demo, but we use it a bit broader than just only Catalan Studio. I, we try to use the Catalan desktops as well, which is amazing, by the way, and, and the other features that the Catalan platform has to offer um, so that everybody knows that, that you just kind of Google around and look at things past Catalan Studio because there's a lot more to it than just Catalan Studio. Everybody knows. We appreciate the plug, Dean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. So maybe let's get to the real content then. Um, maybe just let's do a, a, a quick poll. Um, uh, how many of you are now actually in the middle of the migration to SAP for HANA, for example? Are you using SAP for HANA or are you doing um, both, uh, which is kind of the intermediary thing to do when you come from SAP ECC when you might have running multiple instances uh, next to each other? We've got a, we've got a few uh, answers popping up on the poll question now. Um, about uh, 60 20 right now, although uh, everybody, if you can jump out there and answer on the poll. Um, in, in favor of migrating to HANA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which, which is kind of normal uh, given SAP put out a clear deadline of the year 2027 for yep. all of their customers using older instances to at least migrate to something newer, which will be uh, for HANA. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, that's so yes, the last is 71% migrating to HANA, uh, and then one for just already on HANA and one for doing both. So someone's busy living on HANA and migrating to HANA. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that that was kind of like I expected, as I said before, SAP has put out a clear deadline into doing that. And so we at Brightest, we started looking at okay, ERP projects or most, most of them are kind of complex because actually it's the beating heart of the company, right? An ERP system. Everything goes through it and everything that goes out of the company, like product orders, pallets filled with products, they usually all go to your ERP system. So if that doesn't work right, that means that your business from an operational level will also not work right. And when we look at our own history in doing ERP testing for clients, despite the fact that we've put some of the best test consultants on those projects, we noticed that it wasn't always going according to plan. Uh, mainly the one of the main issues there lied in actually stabilizing the whole testing part. So we thought we have to do it better. And we designed what we called um, ERP testing as a pipeline. So what we mean by that is that we've created an automation-driven quality approach focused on integrating and deploying any ERP solution from the first time, right, that comes with a whole lot of benefits, not only for the organization implementing the ERP, but also some upsides at the vendor side and all stakeholders involved, yeah? So you can go to the next slide, by the way, Armando. You know, Dean, when you're doing a migration, do you is are your bigger issues usually process issues or are they technical issues? Both. Um, it depends on how this migration is approached. Um, what we see now, because of on the SAP side, then because of SAP rolled out their public cloud variant of for Hana. Um, is that they try to convince their customers to adapt their own processes to for HANA and not the other way around. And that way you avoid the technical issues of setting up for HANA, but you have a lot of change going on uh, from an operational point of view at your client side. Managing that change, depending on the type of organization you're in, can be painful. Uh, but nevertheless, it's it's needed. But when it comes to um, the, the technical parts where it's, it's challenging is that now you have systems like for HANA where they shifted from adapting the core to 
just connect it to third-party integrations wherever it's needed. So the core stays the same, but you actually build around that, so to say. So that means that there are some new testing challenges that are arising, uh, meaning that one way or another, you thought you were finished with dependencies, but you're not. You're working with third parties integration now. So in theory, yeah. you have a bit more. Yeah. Uh, enough, another challenge that we see popping up very often is test data management, either because of the fact that the test environment is kind of a sandbox and doesn't really have actual business data in there. So it's very hard to test scenarios end-to-end, -end, basically. Uh, we, we try to tackle that in our solution. We'll get to that in the demo. Um, so in general, this, this move from core development to integration-based development around the core now uh, basically requires a different approach to testing. And, and I think that testers that step into this from a more traditional point of view of that have been working with SAP for a long time, since the beginning days, that they must adapt to these new technologies and methodologies in, in, in general, yeah? Because the landscape is changing and it's, it's changing fast and we all need to keep up. And, and Catalan Studio offers us with a lot of functionality that helps us to keep up. Yeah. So yeah, uh, well, also something that that comes up is that you know there's a misconception at the management side of things where they think like, okay, yeah, we we do a migration and then we migrate it and and it stops there. So we do all the testing by hand and we only have to do it once. Whilst that was true for the older versions of ERP systems, they basically just got installed in your own data center and you had control over it. The control you have now is decreasing. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying it's not there anymore because you can have a private cloud variant, uh, but the public cloud is, is really upcoming. More companies are choosing that. Uh, which means that you have frequent releases of your SAP systems, which also means that if you have a lot of third-party integrations, that it would be advised for you to do a regression test set um, every time that there is a release. But say that you are a, a big multinational company flying in 40 business key users every quarter from every edge of the world is not cost-efficient. By the way, they don't like re-executing those tests um, if they already had any form of structures test anyway. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's something that nobody enjoys, and that's where we said, okay, but this is the part where we can use automation properly to tackle that. And because of the fact that SAP now has a more accessible ways of interfacing with it, meaning the um, SAP business technology platform, meaning the SAP Fiori interfaces, uh, this has made it that a solution like Catalon that we've been using for years in other technologies now became a feasible case for us to also do on SAP and take a look on how we could re-architect that to modern standards and make sure that you have an automation approach that is not only operationally efficient, but cost efficient as well and as self-sustaining as possible. Those are great points. Um, yeah, especially when you, as you said, as, a lot of the things that folks um, and organizations lose track of when moving to the cloud is that decoupling of control. Um, you know, and especially when, when, when products like, especially ERP, but even work management systems like JIRA or Workday or, or yeah. um, Workforce, you know, those are yeah. all, um, as you add those customizations and you, as you mentioned, those integrations, having, losing that ability to gate the release of the new version um, really impacts the stability sometimes if you don't have an automated process. Yeah, and also in, in combination with the fact that you, you've adopted a bunch of um, SaaS applications, basically, which all come from different vendors, yeah? because you're under the impression like, okay, my Farhana instance is updating three times a year or four times a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. But your workday is doing exactly the same thing. Your HubSpot is doing exactly the same mm -hmm. thing. And they're not going to like call each other and say like, hey, 
what, what, are we going to do it together? That would make it easy on our customers. That not, that's not how mm -hmm. that stuff works. So basically you end up in an ecosystem where you need to do or need to apply continuous testing over your whole integrated application landscape. And that's what a lot of people um, fail to see beforehand. And that comes that comes as a surprise then. And then they say like, oh, costly is a, testing is a really costly affair. Yeah, that depends how you look at it, yeah? Um, if you take yeah. that into account beforehand and make sure that you set up your end-to-end -end tests in such a way that they can run autonomously, so to speak, it doesn't have to be that costly if your initial investment and estimation uh, is, is just more realistic on that part and more transparent, mm -hmm. yeah? So because we have this slide, it's it's very beautifully three releases, but in reality, it's, it's a lot more because your connected landscape has to be accounted for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So which leads us to some of the other common pitfalls yeah, but, yeah, needlessly, actually, because when speaking about the connected landscape, what, what we often see is that you get sort of an incomplete test coverage because you, you know how that goes. You have an SAP vendor. It, they can be a really mature vendor. I'm not going to challenge that, but what a lot of vendors do is basically at any point in time, they say like, okay, we deliver a set of functionality. So we're going to provide the business with a handover document, which is somewhat a crossover in between training materials and explaining the business, how to use uh, the new ERP system. And based on that, they are going to test whether it works for, for them or not. But what's not in those handover documents is the fact that the system is connected via an API connection with a, a third-party CRM application. What is not in there is that it also has another connection to a payment provider. Yeah. Uh, so you get this incomplete test coverage because everybody is so focused on testing SAP that they forget the rest or they automatically assume that everything around that is working as well. Yeah. Um, and if they do have uh, the connected landscape in mind, they often engineer it in the wrong way uh, in terms of test automation so that they have a high maintenance overhead when it comes to maintaining those automated scenarios, uh, meaning a lot of manual work to update the automated scenarios still is a lot of manual work in the end, despite the fact uh, that the scenarios run automated. And, and that's where I see that Catalan self-healing does, does wonders, really, absolutely. Um, which brings to the poor test data management part as well. If you have a sandbox test environment, well, you're going to have to account for your own test data. So we, I'm going to explain in the demo how you can do that in, in several ways to avoid the integration challenges that most of you all have today. Awesome. Awesome. Which leads <clears throat> us into another poll question. Now, I'm going to take a break here real quick to just walk. I, I failed at the beginning to mention everybody. If you're using Zoom, um, on your Zoom control panel where you mute, where you stop video and manage every, and open your chat sessions, um, there is a QA option um, that helps us track and answer questions later if you type them in. Um, let's just know we might answer them live on the text. We'll answer them live during the demo. But if you could make sure to post your questions there, um, if you happen to drop them in the chat, I'll see them eventually. Uh, but that does lead us to just want to cover that little bit of technical know-how. Um, to opening that Q&A section so you can post your questions before asking the next question, which is, what do you find most challenging with SAP test automation? So I will go ahead and launch that poll now. And if you will all take the moment to uh, answer those questions, we'll get a good idea of kind of what you find the most painful. Um, incomplete test coverage, height maintenance overhead, poor test data management, or integration challenges. Feel free to jump out there and, and start at answer, posting your thoughts on that. Dean, any thoughts in that space? I'm sure you've got a few experiences. Unmuting myself would be uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I see the integration challenge as something that I expect the most because um, it's difficult to make sure from an architectural point of view that your SAP test environment has 
the same level hierarchical uh, environments of the third party integration. Something that I often encounter at our clients is like, for example, your SAP has a test and a UAT environment. And then you have your third party integration that you need to connect with. You want to test that end to end on the test environment, but it turns out that that your third-party integration doesn't provide you with one. Uh, so so that, that's an issue, or if they do provide you with one, it's like it's like UAT, so it, it's you, you, you have the mismatch there. That becomes more difficult to, to manage, and, and in conjunction comes the poor data management, of course. So there are all things that we try to address in our approach. I'm not saying that we're doing this perfectly on... on every client's project because every project is different and has its specific complexities that sometimes you just cannot go around. But we do provide everybody um, of our people with, with a specific guideline to how you can tackle that. And we've seen that the majority of places that we implemented this, that it really was a solution for the problems they, uh, they were having. So yeah, nothing new here when I see the poll. I see 63% integration challenges, 38 poor test data management. That are the, the two that come up the most uh, in combination with then the high maintenance overhead and the incomplete test coverage. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing that the next slide is already there, which is absolutely great because I needed that one uh, to explain myself first. So um what we actually did in terms of test automation is, first of all, we completely rely on the Catalan platform. And that I mean in the broadest sense, where we use Catalan Studio really as our automation tool to test web, native, mobile, and API tests, right? So we're not just using it for the UI. We are using it in the broadest sense of all the feature that it has to offer, just because of the fact that these modern ERP systems um, <clears throat> have all those kinds of um, have all those kinds of applications, all those kinds of dimensions, uh, in combination with their third-party integration. For example, you can um, do uh, manual stock updates in SAP, but you might have a VMS. Uh, system running that has handheld Android scanners uh, where that your people use for order picking in, in the warehouse. So that's something that eventually you, you will need to test end-to-end -end and to automate that end-to-end -end test. Uh, you can just do that using Catalan Studio because it has the support uh, to test both and to parse data into those different tests uh, that's aligned over your whole ecosystem. So that's that's really great. And in terms of test management and test orchestration, we do use Catalan test ops because it provides an enormous level of visibility, not only in your test results, uh, but also in your test planning, your scheduling and everything like that. So um, that, that's where the value really lies in combination with the self-healing part for the UI test. Because as I said, SIP has modernized, they have their Fiori interfaces, and this kind of had the reputation of being really bad or difficult to automate. And we messed around with a lot of different testing tools, but we find out when you look at it from the perspective of value for money that Catalan Studio actually was one of the best solutions for that. And that on the other hand, the SAP Fiori interfaces, guys, they're not that bad. They're perfectly automatable if you know your way around it. And if it, to, to give you an example, when you see business people working with those interfaces, they're not clicking around. They're using only their keyboard. Yeah, well, you, you can use only your keyboard as well. You can tell Catalon to act in that way, and then basically you're automating it in the same way that the business approaching it, which is perfectly possible. And if you interact with the objects, the self-healing part is absolutely nice because you get to a certain point where there is a field added to a form, for example. And back in the old days where you have your custom automated frameworks, yeah, that, that's really nice, but that test is going to break. And with Catalan Studio, it, it doesn't do that. It just alerts you that it has spot an anomaly, and, but it did apply a fix, and you just have to confirm whether or not you want to 
have that fixed. Um, so yeah, if you confirm it, it will refactor it in your own project. And that saves us a lot of time, a lot, a lot, a lot of time. I can't tell you exactly how much time that saves us, but in my head, it really makes a world of a difference. So that 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 keeps us on the main maintainability part. But if you go to look at the test data part, that is where the true magic lies. And we help, we also use Catalan Studio to do that, uh, specifically the custom keywords. But I think it's better that I just go ahead and, and show you guys. What do you think, Armando, Mike? That'd be great. I think it's a good, good way to move over. Okay. Just let me share my screen. See the good stuff. Yeah, the good stuff. <laughs> Okay, so normally now everybody can see my screen, right? Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. So when you look at our tests um, for SAP, for HANA, or for any ERP system for that matter, they usually all start out as basic Catalan recordings. Yeah? I'm not going to explain how a Catalan recording works. Uh, the fact that you're in this, in this webinar session uh, will usually mean that you already have a sense of what Catalan Studio does. So mm -hmm. this is basically a pre-recorded scenario for SAP. And as much as we at Brightest appreciate the record and playback functionality from Catalan Studio, um, we don't look at Catalan Studio only as, um, how do I say this, only as a low coding, drag and drop kind record and playback automation tool. We look at Catalan Studio more as an IDE, meaning an integrated development environment that has been specifically created for test automation, much like IntelliJ would be for Java development. For example, for us, Catalan Studio is an IDE that helps you to efficiently create and maintain automated tests in any way possible. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's also little... what that's one of the yeah. beautiful things about Catalan Studio is it can be for those that need it to be a no code, low code solution. It can be that. And for those that need to dive more into a IDE like environment, it can be that too. So absolutely, Mike. Uh, and, and let me, let me show you that in practice, because what, what you're saying is absolutely too. So we start out from the recording and then we basically say, okay, there's quite a lot in that recording that we will be reusing in multiple test scenarios. So for our own sake, we'll just start to cut this recording apart. We cut it into pieces and we're going to make separate test cases of that. Yeah. So for SAP, we basically, um, let me see, let me open this. We basically um, divided up our snippets, so to say, in actions, components, and flows. Yeah, Meaning that a component is something that you need to use all the time. For example, logging in a user or authenticating a user, you will not test anything in SAP without being logged in or without being logged in with the correct role and the correct permissions. Yeah. Um, same for the API, you cannot access the API without authenticating. So that, that would be the type of components that we put here for reuse, right? So if you see here, here you see everything to log in a user. We made what we call uh, a component of that. This is basically going to log in a user, which then has, of course, an email and a password for an API. It can be an API key or another means of authentication. It's whatever you want it to be, but keep in mind that this is a reusable component, right? So then we have the actions, which is usually a separate, smaller action in an ERP system. For example, um, let's take a look at accounts payable. We have quite a lot in there. But um, for example, managing payment blocks is a smaller action in SAP, which is part of a bigger process. It's a sub-process, so to say. So we have created snapshots of those sub-processes here that you can just call as a test case in another scenario. And by using those actions and components all together, you can create what we call a flow. So let me open one as an example, um, 
need to take one that I know that still works. <laughs> Let me, uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, so as you can see here, uh, this is a flow that uh, that calls different test cases, uh, and this is, for example, a component of navigating to SAP. It's a component of logging in the user. It's a component to go to a specific SAP app, meaning once you're logged in. And then we have a component that represents one of those actions that you see here. Yeah. So we notice that this is a project setup that works very well, not only in terms of maintainability, because when I adapt uh, my action, like production and maintain plant individual requirements, for example, if I adapt that uh, in my actions, every other flow that will use that action will automatically be updated. So in terms of maintenance, it keeps your maintenance level really low. On the other hand, these are all named in the business domain language, meaning that if I sit together with a less technical person and I need to talk them into using an automation tool like Catalan, for example, or have a discussion with them on the test cases in general, that they still understand what I'm trying to do here and that they also can understand what this flow is doing. Yeah, so we really name these objects in the business domain language. And of course, additionally, just in plain English, in the description field, we, we foresee high level what that step does. Uh, uh, you also have it in the individual um, action um, where there is more detail about that. So let me, let me look up that action here. Um, I think let's see here. Um, so let me open up that action. So you see, this is really what you would expect from a step-by-step -step test scenario. And if anybody wanted to execute this manually just for the sake of it, they could, but here they understand what is going on here. Yeah? So, and this is just by using the drag and drop interface. Now, as mentioned before, there are a few complexities that comes into place and they are handled here. First of all, um, say that, for example, your SAP environment is kind of a sandbox, meaning that your vendor will present you with finished features that you can test, but there's actually a very limited amount of data in there corresponding to the type of data what your business has. Yeah. Um, so this means two things. You either need to migrate the data from your original production environment, but there's a small issue there, meaning that the whole database format is entirely different because it's an old, this older system, right? Um, yeah. And eventually you need to do that because it's part of your goal life, of course, but it's kind of complex, take into account that you still need to mask sensitive data, yada, yada, yada. There's a lot going on there. So we say like, okay, we want to be in control of our own data. And SAP being the modern system as it is today, uh, actually allows you with the possibility to inject uh, data via the API that you can then use in testing, meaning that you control your own data flow which your tests will be using, your tests will run, and then you can either choose to clean it up again where it's possible, or just to let it sit because it will be unique data and it will be data that matches your business. So why not leave it in there for anybody else to test with, yeah? But the thing is, how, how do we do that? Because there wasn't a real native functionality in Catalan Studio to do that. You have the data binding with Excel sheets. You can connect to a database, so you can directly query. And that's a very nice functionality. But in a project like this, uh, it just doesn't have any real value yet because the real data is simply not there. You can query a database, but there's nothing there that has true business value, right? And on the other hand, you want to be able to fluently reuse that data when you do an end-to-end -end test between SAP and your third-party integrated system, yeah? So you want the data to be present in both. And that's why we actually use the approach to completely virtualize that data. But Catalan is not a blocking issue here because you can just create custom keywords here. Yeah? 
Um, Armando or Mike, maybe one of you can describe the definition of a custom keyword a bit better than I do in Catalan terms uh, before I dive into that. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty much how you design it. So our, the, the keywords are um, placeholders for common actions, um, and it's how we build out uh, the the interactions for whether it's a web um, or for custom objects that are within a variety of packaged apps, right? So it's it's kind of the it's the intermediary intermediary between the core uh, automation technology and how it interacts with all the objects. So there's a bunch of them out there that are kind of cut standard keywords for objects on on web pages and web APIs and things like that. And then obviously, you know, for SAP, for Salesforce, for um, uh, Guidewire, I mean, so Salesforce Guidewire is kind of an in, uh, insurance industry uh, space um, tool, uh, ERP, well, not an ERP, but solution. Um, all those would have custom keywords that are the placeholders within Catalan for interactions or actions that would be taken with those objects on the web. Yeah, I couldn't have said that better myself. Um, so yeah, we, we use this keyword functionality because for us, it's a bridge in between um, Catalan standard functionality and what we actually need in practice for testing. So if we want to control our own data, it means we need to create one. So we developed a custom keyword that actually is going to ask a service like OpenAI to provide us with uh, an SAP material, which needs a name, an ID, a group ID, a type, a product family ID, base unit of measure, this and that, yeah? And before we do that at a customer's project, we try to analyze as much of their current data as possible. So we try to use a platform like Tonic AI, which you guys maybe already know, um, where you can start with older production copies of the data, you can then analyze that. And once that your AI system is smart enough in knowing what type of data your the business would actually need, we basically are going to ask it in the beginning of the test, generate me a material. And it needs to have a name, group ID type, and all these parameters, but it needs to be aligned with what the business needs. Meaning that if you are a construction company, you probably would like construction materials in your inventory, right? You would like real construction materials in your SAP test environment because that's what you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's how we kind of make it smart, yeah? You can do that via OpenAI. You can do that via other services as well. We made this custom keyword and we make this custom keyword available um, for all our consultants um, to reuse, yeah, in their Catalan projects. They can just reuse this project as well because it already has a lot of scenarios and they are constructed on the SAP for HANA public cloud, meaning that they are reusable on every public cloud instance because it's it's the same. And most certainly we you say, if, if you as a company go to the SAP for HANA public cloud, you'll be taking everything as is, right? So you can use this out of the box are you going to a private cloud and do a little bit of customization? That was a problem as well, because we can just re-record these scenarios together with your business and then chop them up in the same components, actions and flows as you saw before. Now, um, there's a way of doing this via OpenAI. There's also a way of doing this via Mockaroo, for example, where you can say, Mockaroo, I need these fields and I want you to fill it in. For example, I'm a construction company, so a material name, I would like to be uh, an actual construction material, for example. And then eventually Mockaroo creates a mock API where you can say, generate me 100 materials, 1,000, 1 million, 2 million. It doesn't matter how much uh, you ask it to. And then it basically generates that data for you. So as you see it here, I've installed a Chrome plugin to make it a bit more consumable for you guys. So you have this information here, which you can then use for testing, meaning that you can also uh, launch a call to this API in the beginning of your test, retrieve a random material, inject it in your system under test. Remember, you are in control of your data. 
you test with it, you eventually break down your test, and voila, you have a test that works on real business savvy data. The upside of this is that your test gains a lot in terms of stability, meaning that if it fails, it will fail because it functionally doesn't actually work because Catalon has the self-healing part. So if something has changed in your UI, it will have picked that up. So you can put that aside. Um, and if you're controlling your own test data, it means that you will not have the excuse that the test data is not there or that that one purchase order that you need has the wrong parameters. Yeah, You are in control of your data this way. So when the test fails, it really will legitimately fail. So before I run this test, uh, something that's also good for you guys to know is that we, we really take the keywords part for, uh, we do the same thing for Microsoft Dynamics, for example. Um, one of our customers asked us to create a keyword to connect with SAP Cloud ALM, which is the Agile Lifecycle Management Tool of SAP, uh, where we also created the keyword so that test results can be pushed back from the Catalan platform to SAP ALM, uh, not because of the not because of that um, Catalan test ops is a bad platform. Uh, it's a really good platform, but in the context of that uh, customer, everybody that was involved with the project from the beginning was using SAP Cloud ALM. It was their go-to solution, also for test management. So why not push back the result? to there so that they can have have the feeling that all of this is integrated in their entire flow and scheme of things and all things SAP, right? Mm -hmm. um, Dean, sorry, uh, yeah. you're talking about uh, the micro focus quality center slash ALM that is sold throughout mm -hmm. SAP, not their own, not their own ALM. Yeah, instance, it's right? their own ALM. It's okay, so, ALM. Right, so yeah. the SAP ALM is, okay, gotcha. Because they, yeah, they, they, they have their it before own, as, uh, they marketed before at SAP LM, but it had a it, it was built by by a HP HP Microfocus now OpenTech. So, so thank you for that. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. See, but yeah, that it's the ALM that they market as their own um, yeah. own ALM, and that is in their system as a part of the SAP Activate methodology. Actually, yeah, yeah. So uh, it, just, it's yeah. Dean, if I can just interject here real quick, um, that is part of Catalan's kind of strategy is, is we want to be, we want to provide all the functionality, but we also want to be open and ability to integrate with other tools. So if you're using something else, like if you're using Jira uh, with, um, with Zephyr or one of their um, uh, test management tools, uh, we have integrations into those tools as well. So that wherever the team that is leading this project and wants to work within it, that within that ALM or within that, that test management tool, um, our goal is to be able to integrate with, with those. And we have several integrations as well, should it not be a SAP, should yeah. be something else. Yeah, it's, and it's something that, that I really can attest to that that stuff really works, uh, Armando. Um, we On other projects, we're using the Azure DevOps integration. We're using the test rail integration. <clears throat> Um, and if it's not there uh, in the Catalan store, so to say, uh, then we just create a custom keyword ourselves and it, and it works very, very smoothly, it never failed us. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of that, that concept. And also that's why I would like to address it again. We see Catalan as an IDE specifically made for doing test automation efficiently. Yeah, And th this is one of the many features that make that happen. So. Uh, yeah, let me just run those tests so you can see what's going on in here. Um, I have some Zoom layovers on my screen, so I will. I want to push the play button, but <laughs> just give me. Uh, yeah, I think I can hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry for that. Zoom has this, this layover on the top of my screen, and I wasn't able uh, to interact with Catalan. So it's actually when you go to client sites. Do you do you see that clients care about um, all the browser capabilities, like multiple browser capabilities, or do they just care about uh, just one? Or what do you, what do you see? Like, do they want um, across it, all browsers? It depends uh, heavily on the project. Oh, let me just swipe this in here because the test is running. 
Um, no, it, it, it depends uh, on the situation. Um, when we speak about ERP projects, mostly it's one browser they are targeting because of the fact that they are basically telling all members of their business that they should right. be using Edge or they should right. be using right. Chrome or an enterprise secured Chrome and all of that. But yeah. when we go outside of that sphere uh, into organizations that are more flexible, uh, who basically have people that bring their own device to work, so automatically will also use their own preferred browser, um, we see a lot of demand for multi-browser testing there. And then we're mainly talking about B2C apps. Yeah. So clients that come to us that make a B2C app, development houses or specific companies that, that own a B2C app and make their money out of it, they are asking us to really do the multi-browser uh, test automation, which um, yeah, you can see this test running here smooth, by the way. So it launched material in the API, use it for testing, and then eventually you have a test here that's actually a combination in between some backend API stuff and, and UI stuff all in one go, yeah? And, and if, we, if we would have want to connect an, or to add an additional check to check whether a material or not would be in your third-party MRP system, that would have just been an extra step, right? Yes. Um, to, to come to back to what Armando was saying, that it's this enable, or no, Mike, that you said that um, Catalon enables also non-technical users to use this. This is the perfect example because all of this is created by more technical people, like, for example, the materials manager. Mm -hmm. But a non-technical person can just call that materials manager here, put in the variables, and it will just absolutely work. Yeah, they can do that via the manual interface and do do not need to be as tech savvy as the person who wrote this code. Yeah, um, so that that's made Catalan Studio a nice tool to facilitate test automation on all levels to have a good talk about it with your business scope wise. And maybe even some other organizations. We have smaller organizations with a limited ERP budget who basically ask us to create and set up the automated test and then learn them how to maintain them. Yeah, for the quarterly releases, they, they ask us to specifically learn some business key users how to maintain those tests. And that, that works actually pretty fine. We, we find that there's not a not a lot of hassle involved with this uh, because of the way Catalon is set up, the blend between doing technical stuff and then making it easy, visible in this drag and drop format is, is very, very powerful uh, for us in combination with good architecture choices that we carry over from our development background. You basically have a setup that can last you forever without breaking the bank and without breaking your back with all the work that you have to do in maintaining those tests. So I think I can sort of round up my demo there, guys. Awesome. <laughs> um, well, let Thanks, me switch Kate. back to the slides. Um, I was about to jump in there and interject because we, we are coming up on the end of the hour. Um, if you have some questions now or the time, um, now is the time to to get them uh, answered or to post them. Um, again, please just type them in. Uh, we will be uh, we'll answer them that way. Um, but during this Q and A, I just want to take a moment for all of you to say thank you. Um, especially thank you to Dean for such a great presentation and demo and and uh, and deep dive into this world of ERP testing, particularly around SAP. But I, I think we can all agree that a lot of these lessons um, and experiences carry over, whether it's SAP, whether it's Salesforce, whether it's e, um, Oracle, ERP, um, Siebel, PeopleSoft from way back in the day, all of them, it, these, these pains just carry forward and, and solutions that, that deal with them are, um, you know, when you can find one, and in this case, Catalan, uh, you know, definitely feel free to please uh, follow up on us if you're still feeling these pains and want to find out how to deal with them using um, either uh, you know support with bright test and using Catalan or or just Catalan itself. Um, if you've got questions about it for other areas, um, so with that said, I am not seeing any questions there. Let me. Uh, I did for some reason when I started sharing my uh, 
my Q and A section disappeared, but we do have one last poll um, that we would like to ask everybody. Um, if, oh, I know where it is. Uh, here we go, launching that poll now. And it's very simple. Uh, how useful did you find this uh, session? Um, and if you'd like to be contacted by either Bright Test or Catalan uh, to talk a little bit more. So uh, for those of you who are, that are here, uh, please feel free to jump in there and, uh, and answer those questions. Um, let us know what you thought. Uh, and again, thank you for your time. But if there are any questions, now is the time. Mike, any last minute questions? Or uh, by the way, if you're seeing that extra uh, amazing face down at the bottom there, that's uh, Mihai uh, from our partnerships teams. And he joined us a little bit late, but never, never, never late for uh, I completely butchered that that saying. Um, better late than never. Um, we, we know what you're so trying to say. There Thank you. Can answer some questions. <laughs> I know it's a. You've had you've had hours of coffee. I've only had one so far. As I'm going to have to have kombucha based on the, what I've heard. I didn't realize that would help <laughs> that much with the coffee. So, um, but I guess the acid does mess everything up. Dean, I, Mike, I, anything else you'd like to add? I, I guess I would just point out that. Uh, to welcome everybody to the Catalan community. If you ever had any questions or if you needed some support around this functionality, uh, feel free to just come on to the Catalan community. Uh, you can always reach me there. I, I'm, I'm in there every day. And we have, uh, we'll have plenty of su support and help and uh, other people that are uh, using these products on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I like to add something to that because I, I see a lot of companies, a lot of co co customers on a daily basis. And sometimes I get the question like, how how mature is, is Catalan? And I'm, I'm always giving them the example of the community and the amount of documentation that is meticulously maintained with regards to the functionality or any form of help you might need. And the community is actually one of the greatest places where, that you can use to grow your own Catalan skills in combination with the, the documentation that is provided. And I think that you also can see that as an additional differentiator as opposed to some other tools that yeah, are just not that good in managing or maintaining that community or maintaining that documentation. So I really have a really good experience with bow dance there from Catalog Studio. So yeah, I Thanks, think it's Steve. worth mentioning for everybody, right? Definitely. Thanks, man. Definitely. We're very proud of that community. Um, glad that uh, we've got a team with Mike there uh, helping support it. Um, and and we look to that, right? That every time we post new, we, we are releasing new features and capabilities monthly right now. Uh, a lot of them, what you'll see a lot is kind of core functionality and we're deploying a lot of AI related capabilities over the next couple of months. Um, some are gonna be pretty game changing. I can't talk about them yet, but we look forward to hearing from you about those as they launch because every time we put something out, we both release a blog post, the technical documentation, and we always create a space in the community for the community to provide us feedback and let us know what they thought. Um, and ask questions about it as well. So um, with that said, we are uh, at the top of the hour. Uh, I don't see any other additional questions uh, posted either in the chat or in the Q&A. So I'll give one last thanks to Dean for joining us and presenting today. Um, and, uh, and Mike, again, thank you for you. And Mihai, of course, drops one last question. Dean, can you kindly list out more tools you've tried out in the area of SAP testing, e.g. Tricentis, OES, and why you chose Catalan. Yeah, uh, so um, why we chose Catalan is, um, how do I say is the best way not to insult other tools? Um, the other you can tools- insult them, that's okay. Yeah, yeah but the, the other <laughs> tools, um, were also great and uh, we're not saying that we're completely not using them you know uh, Bright brightest is a software testing consultancy company so it's obvious that we don't only use catalan studio but with what we do is that every time that we have a customer demand for example for test automation is that we evaluate that um, based on very specific factors being 
the budget of the client, the amount of energy they want to put into it, uh, the type of resources that they have available. Are they technical? Are they less technical? Are they not technical at all? Do they need training? Um, what's the deadline? And, and, and indeed, yeah, uh, budget-wise, that also matters. So when we look at those other tools, they are often functionally great. But when you compare it like mano a mano in features um, versus budget, uh, Catalon Compo most likely always comes out on top for us. I can tell you that beforehand, mostly. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, what we also take into account is the learning curve. And for example, uh, Tricentis Tosca, which is a great tool as well but the learning curve of that tool is just steeper. So if the client does not have the budget to uh, not to buy the licenses, but to facilitate the learning curve or does not have the time to facilitate that steeper learning curve, um, for us, we mostly divert them to Catalan Studio, uh, partially because of the tool is a little bit more user-friendly and because of the fact that it has a huge community and that the documentation is meticulously maintained. Uh, so it, it's, it's all those factors that we, we take into account, which doesn't mean that there aren't uh, any ERP projects where we, uh, we, we, run, we run other tools as well. But when we see the majority of the time when we do those exercises, Catalan just comes out on top, but it doesn't mean that we only prefer uh, Catalan. So we, we use a lot of tools on a daily basis. There are also some of our customers that choose uh, to create their own test automation frameworks like Selenium based or, or Playwright based. And we do that as well. We, we have people that are very knowledgeable there. So it's not that we as Brightest replaced everything in terms of automation by Catalan Studio, because we want to provide our clients with options. But when we do have the space to do a real exercise and have a, have a talk with the client about what they want and how they see it, what their budget is, Catalan most likely will end up on top of that comparison. I hope that answers your questions, uh, Mihai. It does, and it's it's uh, it's exactly what I what I thought as well. And uh, yeah, I I know that you going for just a single tool wouldn't be uh, bright. It I, wouldn't I, be I had bright. To, <laughs> yeah, I, I, see I, I had to go there. there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It, would be, awesome. it would be the brightest move. Yeah, but thank you very much. Yes, it does answer the question. Yeah. Well, with that said, um, we'll uh, stop here. Uh, one final thank you to everybody uh, and a thank you to all of you for joining us today and spending your valuable time. Um, again, this will be sent out for recording. So if you had to step up, walk away, and maybe even you're hearing this later. Uh, thanks for being there. Uh, hope you find something of value. Um, there'll be more webinars. So feel free to uh, register for our email at Catalan. And uh, there are links that will be available for Catalan for Bright Test to register for announcements from them. Um, thank you very much. And Wherever you may be, good morning, good night, or good evening, and have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.